everyone my name is Mohit and the topic for today's discussion is colorectal cancer or CRC. Colorectal cancers are the malignant tumors which develop in the wall of large intestine including the rectum. They are the most common cancers of the GI tract and are a major cause of disease and death around the world. This is our, our today's lectures um, outline in which, in which we will revisit polyps and adenomas, we'll briefly talk about epidemiology and we'll discuss pathogenesis, how these adenomas uh, progress towards cancer by two main pathways. Uh, then we will discuss morphology of colorectal neoplasia in which we will see some images of both macroscopic and microscopic uh, patterns. Then we will discuss some clinical pathological correlates in colorectal cancer and finally we will summarize this lecture followed by references and Q&A if you have any. So, so let's start with revisiting polyps. So these polyps are basically uh, mucosal growths which present as protruding space occupying lesions. They are most common in the colorectal region but may also occur in esophagus, stomach or small intestine. Most if not all polyps begin as small elevations of the mucosa. They can be sessile, that means they don't really have a stalk and they are firmly attached to the wall of the intestine. So this is the lumen of the intestine, this is the wall of the intestine and then you have a polyp which has developed in on within the mucosa which is protruding into the the lumen and they don't really have any stalk and they are very firmly attached to the wall. In comparison there are some polyps which look like this. They are polypoid growths but they would have a stalk and this stalk is something which will help them move freely within the lumen of the intestine. Right so these are called pedunculated polyps and these are called sessile polyps. Now in general intestinal polyps can be classified as non-neoplastic or neoplastic in nature. The most common neoplastic polyp is the adenoma which has the potential to progress to cancer. The non-neoplastic polyps can be further classified as hyperplastic, hematomatous, Peutz-Jagger and lymphoid polyps. The most common neoplastic polyps are colonic adenomas which are precursors to the majority of colorectal adenocarcinomas. Adenomas are intraepithelial neoplasms that range from small often pedunculated polyps to large sessile lesions and we'll have a look at the morphology in some time. They are usually polypoid representing a focus of intraepithelial neoplasia in the gut mucosa. Frequency increases with age and patients at increased risk including the ones which have a family history of colorectal adenocarcinoma are typically screened colonoscopically at least 10 years before the youngest age at which a relative was diagnosed with CRC. While adenomas are less common in Asia, their frequency has increased in these populations as western diets and lifestyle become more common. Colorectal adenomas are characterized by a presence of epithelial dysplasia. Most adenomas are clinically silent with the exception of large polyps that pre produce occult bleeding and anemia and rare villous adenomas that cause hypoproteinemic hypokalemia by secreting large amounts of proteins and potassium. So these are three different types of adenomas based on the morphology as we see them under the microscope. So based on the morphology they can be called a tubular adenoma in which you would have the same adenoma or the same polyp but you will have the glands which will have like these tiny little holes and form tubules if you think of it as a two-dimensional structure or they could be villous adenomas which look like these tiny little trees they have these villi or they can be a mixture of both in which you would have some villi 
and you would have some holes right so based on that they can be called tubular adenoma they can be called villus adenomas or tubulo villus adenomas so these tubular adenomas they are typically pedunculated and they have a low risk of cancer you can see crowded mass of branched tubules villus adenomas are as i said earlier are often sessile they they carry increased risk of cancer have a villus architecture and they look papillary when you see under a microscope a tubular villus adenoma is a mixture and it's basically a 25 to 50 percent uh, uh, pattern of, of, of villus or, to, or you have a 25 to 50 percent villus component. This is a, a very gray zone in which there is a lot of inter observer variability when we always uh, see under the microscope and some pathologist uh, pathologists they say that it's a tubular villus while others will, will, will just call them tubular. Uh, so it's a really a gray zone and it has a lot of inter observer variability as I said earlier now so so what are the, the microscopic features which define an adenoma so large nuclei right so if you have large nuclei which are elongated hyperchromatic and vary in size from cell to cell that means they have pleomorphism so if you have a large nuclei that means you have increased NC ratio when you have the cells which are really dark in color I mean those nuclei which are very dark in color they have they are hyperchromatic and they vary in size from cell to cell that means they are pleomorphic right and uh, nuclei they are also not located along the basal aspect of the cell but they vary in position within the epithelium that means they lose their polarity mitoses are more frequent and can occur anywhere in the epithelium not just at the base because at the base you would anyways find the mitosis because it's it's a rapidly proliferating epithelium but you will not find the uh, uh, mitosis at the apex they will lose their differentiation so what is their differentiation that they are going to produce a lot of mucin so when these cells become dysplastic when they become neoplastic they lose that differentiation and they have reduced amounts of uh, of mucus within them so goblet cells are less frequent and they have a smaller amount of uh, of mucin so as you can see here so this picture you can see an adenoma which is which is really pretty you have an adenoma which is here and you have a nice stalk which is present here so this is a colonoscopic view of an adenoma and you can see here that there is a, a nice villus ad, uh, a nice tubular adenoma in which you can see normal uh, colonic epithelium on both sides and the muscularis mucosi has gone up to form a fibrovascular stalk and then you have this purple uh, mass of proliferative epithelium that has predominantly tubular growth pattern so a typical pattern of growth where neoplastic cells form tubular ingrowths down from the surface epithelium and in this you have a high power uh, view showing normal at the bottom and you have a neoplastic gland uh, on the top side by side so now you can see here this is the muscularis mucosae and there is no evidence of invasion into the neoplastic epithelium beyond this layer of smooth muscle and then you can see here this is the normal mucosa which will which is covered so you have the normal mucosa here you have a normal mucosa here and here you have these all those neoplastic glands in which you will see that there is hyperchromasia there is loss of polarity the cells are having a pseudo stratification you have less amount of uh, of mucin being produced by these cells you may even be able to find some mitotic figures um, at the apex or towards the lumen of these glands so all these features they point towards a neoplastic process which is an adenoma so you had this high power photograph which I have shown you earlier so you have the gland which is neoplastic here and you have a gland which is completely normal here so you can easily compare so this is the, the point where the tumor has started and it may progress to further things all right 
Villus adenomas, this is a very large villus adenoma, as you can see here. So this lesion is sessile, right? Given its size, this lesion is likely to have focal areas of severe dysplasia in it, and you could call this carcinoma in situ if you wanted, but by convention, few people use this terminology for colorectal neoplasms. So as you can see here, there is a villus component. We can see that thing on slice. So there is villus com com component here. You can see a lot of villi. So this is how a typical villus would look like. Right, so here this is this is how a typical villus would look like. Branching structures or leaf-like structures. So the cells have the same features. They will have again increased NC ratio. They will have loss of polarity, increased mitosis, pseudostratification, uh, loss of differentiation. So all those features are present. It's only the pattern. It's only uh, the morphology which has changed, um, uh, and then and that's why they are called villus adenomas. Now coming to epidemiology globally, colorectal cancer is the third most commonly diagnosed cancer in males, and second in females. So thus, colorectal endocarcinoma is, is responsible for nearly 10% of all cancer deaths. The incidence of these tumors is highest in North America, with the United States accounting for approximately 10% of worldwide cases and cancer death. This represents nearly 15% of all cancer-related deaths in the United States, second only to lung cancer. In Australia, New Zealand, Europe and with changes in lifestyle and diet, Japan also have high incidences of colorectal adenocarcinomas. In contrast, rates are lower in South America, India, Africa and South Central Asia. In Malaysia, overall incidence rate for CRC was 21.32 cases per 100,000 and they had a highest incidence among Chinese ethnicity based on this report which was published in Epidemiology and Health. It's, it's also important to understand that colorectal cancer risk increases with age and five-year survival rate for bowel cancer patient is 68%. Now, the combination of molecular events that lead to colonic adenocarcinoma is heterogeneous and includes at least two genetic pathways. They are APC beta catenin pathway, which is also called classic adenoma carcinoma sequence, and microsatellite instability pathway. So both pathways involve stepwise accumulation of multiple mutations, but they have different genes. As we can see in case of APC beta catenin pathway, the APC gene is the one which gets mutated, whereas in microsatellite instability pathway, there are defects in DNA mismatch repair, and we'll have a short discussion. Now, what happens? So there are a couple of factors which increase the risk of progression of an adenoma to carcinoma. So not surprise, surprisingly, the bigger an adenoma, the more likely it is to progress towards carcinoma. That means the size is an important factor. So size, especially if it's, if it, I'm sorry, size if it's more than 10 mm, so more the size, there are increased chances of developing into cancer. Architecture. Uh, so villus architecture increases the likelihood. So if the architecture is villus as compared to tubular, there is increased chances of developing into a cancer degree of dysplasia, which could be high grade or low grade. And of course, a high grade dysplasia would have increased chances of developing into cancer as compared to a low grade dysplasia. Uh, so, size greater than 10 mm, villus architecture, and high-grade dysplasia all increase risk of cancer and development, and they're all features of an advanced adenoma, right? So, advanced adenoma is a term which is used for adenomas, sorry, which have a much higher risk for malignant progression, and finding them may indicate the need for more frequent colonoscopic surveillance of the patient in the future. Now, what's this adenoma carcinoma sequence? CRC provides a classic paradigm for relating genetic changes seen in tumor progression to the changes that are evident morphologically. 
Thus, the adenoma carcinoma sequence can be linked to underlying genetic pathways as shown. This model was first proposed by Fioron and Wojelstein in the late 1980s and has been altered over the years and has served as a model for uh, carcinogenesis for various other tumors. Please remember, this is a concept and it's not a template and it changes all the time as our understanding grows. However, you should always uh, remember a few genes and I believe that you might have heard of these genes like APC, beta catenin and P53 and also telomerase. So all these things we have already discussed in the chapter of neoplasia in basic pathology. The mismatch repair pathway is when there are defects in mismatch repair genes like MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, PMS1 and 2 and they result in microsatellite instability and permit accumulation of mutations in numerous genes. If these mutations affect genes involved in cell survival and proliferation, cancer may develop. So these are those mismatch repair genes and there are different genes which are involved and over a period of time they will have different mutations which will get accumulated and a tumor will develop into an adenoma and eventually will lead to carcinoma. So basically these two pathways as we have seen earlier a normal colorectal mucosa will have APC mutation or may have a BRAF mutation merely to a conventional adenoma or a serrated polyp. They both are adenomas but they have different morphology as you can see here they have some serrations whereas tubular adenomas as we have seen they might have a tubular or villus or a tubular villus pattern. So eventually they would have chromosomal instability uh, colorectal cancer which are MSS or microsatellite stable and they are aneuploid whereas the ones which are from serrated polyps they are methylated and they are microsatellite instable. So this is instability uh, and they are deployed. But the most common pathway is um, the APC beta canadian pathway which causes 80% of the colorectal cancers. Now talking about morphology we will discuss macroscopic and microscopic patterns of these tumors and we'll also have a look at tumor grade or differentiation. So the macroscopic morphology tumors of proximal colon often grow as polypoid exophytic masses that extend along one wall of the of the large caliber cecum and ascending colon and these tumors they rarely cause obstruction so as you can see here or you can just imagine um, right so so now you can see here as this is the the wall of the bowel and you have the mucosa which is present here and a tumor which is present on, on the right side would, would look something like this. So there is a tumor which is present as a semi annular mass. This is not present throughout the wall of the or throughout the lumen. So this is present at one end. So this is it's very easy to cut this part of the intestine and open it apart. So you can open it and see it. So as you can see here So this tumor which is present here is a polypoid mass which is present at one side of the wall. So this is not going to cause any obstruction whereas they will cause mainly uh, problems like anemia and all those things because of blood loss. Again you can see here this, this could be cut easily. You don't really have to cut through the tumor because the tumor is present at one side of the wall. Tumors of, no, of distal colon they tend to be annular in encircling lesions as you can see here again. So this is the wall and you have the mucosa. The tumor in these cases would develop something like this. So there is a tumor which will involve the wall in an annular fashion. So the whole wall is affected and this is going to cause puckering or increased fibrotic response and will pull the wall or pull the serosa and leads to a deformity which is called a, a napkin ring deformity because this part is the tumor and this tumor has caused fibrotic response and has caused narrowing of this part of the intestine. So this will lead to a, a napkin ring deformity. So this is where the, the tumor is. 
a microscopic morphology the general microscopic characteristic of right and left sided colonic adenocarcinomas are similar most tumors are composed of tall columnar cells that resemble dysplastic epithelium so all the features which we have talked about earlier all those dysplastic epithelial features in case of adenoma are found in adenocarcinomas as well the only difference is they are invasive whereas tubular adenomas or villous adenomas they are non invasive so the moment they invade they become cancer and the invasive component of these tumor elicits a strong stromal desmoplastic response which is responsible for the, the characteristic foam consistency of these tumors other variants are also present like mucinous signet ring and urendocrine types and the grade of this tumor they are they can be well differentiated in which case you will have all the cells which will form tubular glands you can have moderately differentiated in which you can see some cells which are trying to form glands some are forming well formed glands so they have a 50-50 gland and non glandular component and then you have a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma in which some cells are forming these abortive glands but most of the cells are not able to form glands and then you have a completely undifferentiated carcinoma in which we can't tell what this tumor is because we see, can't see any any uh, gland formation so so what you see are basically single cells or sheets of cells which are very difficult to differentiate so loss of differentiation is seen in terms of loss of of relationship between cells as well as in individual cells so here we can see this is a moderately differentiated tumor you can see some of the, the of the, the cells are able to form glands whereas some are not able to form glands you can see some uh, solid areas here you can see some glands here but you can see some solid areas elsewhere right so these are so this is a moderately differentiated cancer and this one is a poorly differentiated cancer in which you can see the tumor cells are forming sheets or they are present singly and you have an increased amount of desmoplastic response all these are fibroblasts which are present and they will pull um, uh, the intestine which may lead to a napkin ring deformity as we have seen earlier now we have to clinically correlate all those things which we have seen earlier so a right sided lesions as we have seen earlier they are exophytic polypoid masses right and they will and they are semi annular they are not the ones which will cause complete blockage or complete obstruction of the lumen so they are the ones which mainly lead to anemia due to occult blood loss and hence and because of iron deficiency they lead to anemia whereas left sided lesions they cause constriction because because if you remember the tumor involves the full the, the full wall or it has an annular arrangement and and that would cause constriction and that constriction would lead to altered bowel habits and they also sometimes have bright blood per rectum uh, rectal cancers are the ones which cause tenesmus they cause rectal pain and diminished caliber of stools uh, put simply there is a moderate correlation between the position of the tumor left or right sided and the ways the tumor is most likely to present these are not absolute associations but it is always good to try and correlate pathology with clinical features so you can see here uh, so you have right sided colonic carcinoma which is in a cecum that this is part of the appendix perhaps which we can see here and there is a large mass which is not annular this is a semi annular mass because it's a right sided colonic carcinoma it's an annular it's a semi annular mass which has so in this case you can see a cecum which has been transected uh, to show a large polypoid tumor this is a left sided tumor which has an annular the whole wall is involved and you have to cut through the tumor to see the tumor you can't just simply cut the part of the of the wall which we can cut here in this case you have to cut through the tumor and they produce narrowing of the bowel and hence changes in bowel habits rectal tumors they produce lot of mucus and blood and if i ask you could you reach this one with your finger and what would it feel like so this is a question for you to think about right so in summary benign epithelial neoplastic polyps of the intestines are termed adenomas most crcs arise from colorectal adenomas through one of the two genetic pathways which is abc beta canadian pathway or a mismatch repair genes pathway 
A hereditary bowel cancer syndromes are important to recognize and include Lynch syndrome and familial adenomatosis. Uh, polyposis, which are beyond the scope of this lecture at the moment, but they are important uh, uh, events to recognize. And then the last uh, morphology and location of CRC correlates with symptoms. All right, thanks so much for your time, and these are my references. Thanks again. Thank you.